Hello, everyone. Uh, we're going to hold on for a few minutes, let a few more people log in, um, and we'll get ready uh, started in about a minute. Uh, thanks for uh, tuning in. There we go. Right. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thanks for uh, joining in. Um, I got my good friend, uh, CEO uh, from South Birmingham, Alex Cushenson here. And um, we are very excited about uh, what we have uh, ready to present to you, really kind of going on the offensive of how to take advantage of this marketplace. Alex, uh, how are we doing today? Man, I'm doing great. And and as you know me, I know, look, everyone on the West Coast is like, look, it's a little bit early, no drinks allowed, but it's afternoon here, okay? And you know how we roll. When we present, we have a little drink, we have a little fun. So uh, excited to be to be speaking with everyone today. Now you make me think I should pull out one of the bottles from the from the desk here, you know, but it is 10 a.m. So that might be a little bit early for us here. <laughs> you, have, you, have a little, you have a little different situation. I'm in the future. I'm three hours ahead. Right, you are in the future. I love so, it. That's right. Yeah. Um, what I'm gonna do today, just uh, before we get started, uh, I'm gonna give you a little, just a just real quick brief background. And sorry, this is honestly a 30 second or less famous plug. We're in the business of helping lenders close more loans. Uh, we do it for a lot of lenders. We handle over 50,000 bar applications a month. So when it comes to bar engagement and data management and everything, we have a lot of um, good best practices and insight on that. And we really do that with um, our two core products are CRM and lead management, both CRM and lead management, both desktop and a uh, mobile version, which, which is releasing in July. And then our engagement platform that helps automate communication uh, through text, email, rings, voicemail, social media, direct mail, phone calls. Um, those are the two products that we help you uh, close more loans with. Um, that's that's it for my shameless plug. And then I know Alex has something to talk about how Sales Boomerang um, uh, can help you guys as well. Yes, just just real quick for those of you that are, are not aware of who Sales Boomerang is and what we do, uh, we wear it on our clothes. We have it as a mission: no borrower left behind. That's the reason we're in this industry. Um, and 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 really, if you, if you jump to the next slide, there, um, Josh, it's there's there's going to be eleven on average. Every borrower is going to have about eleven transactions in their lifetime, from the first to the last, right? And so our job is to help you get all of them. And and it's really for the borrower experience, of course, for you as well. So they're having a great experience and coming back, you're having a great experience. Um, so that's what we do. And, and, and you're going to see this come up a lot, but this is our job, right? This is, this is what we're here for, for the entire presentation. Um, but this is what we help do. We help make it rain for you guys in, in as little effort as possible. And we're going to talk about some of those strategies today, which is why we're on. Excellent. I think um, Alex is, could jump right in here. I think uh, this is a slide you put together. I think was good. Is, is really uh, great. Tell them of where we're at right now in the marketplace. Yeah, I mean, look, so, so, and Josh, you're going to have a lot more to say about this um, in, in general, but I thought this was a really good discovery and really good slides to kind of, it's very important to, to just know what's happening right now, right? What's, what's currently happening and, and sort of um, understanding why we're having this conversation today and, and helping you prepare for, for the, the near future and 2021 as well. But if you look at this, um, sales are projected to jump, everything is projected to jump up. We saw this Q2. Uh, the numbers kind of slow down. You can see it's a 3.4, um, but it's supposed to jump back up to 5.3 million in, in Q3. And so, and you can see rates right above that continue to decline, 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 decline um, down through uh, 2021. So um, it's, it's just important to have an understanding of what is happening now and the effects it's going to have on the future and how you should be preparing for it. Just just a, a brief understanding. So that's all. I thought this slide was just a great way to kind of um, anchor down the current moment that we're living in. That's, that was the purpose of this one. Yeah, and, and guys, if you look at these numbers, <clears throat> something to point out to you is just the actual volume. So 2021 looks like it may be projected as the same or bigger year than 2020, 
which is was upwards revised by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac to be more origination than 2019. You know, I think this is something that is telling right now in the marketplace. Um, depending if you're an originator or a lender, you know, you may be busier than you can imagine, right? So I have we have lenders that can't even keep up with demand. We have some lenders right now who are trying to figure out where they should go find their business. The reality is it's there. There's tons of business right now. And if you're in this industry, this is really the time to set yourself up for the next year or two to really crush it and really use data and technology to really make that grow. Uh, Fannie Mae came out today, or Freddie Mac came out today, um, new home sales or home sales has already jumped over 10% in the first week of May. They expect that it's gonna, we're not where we were last May, but we're already increasing that that demand. You know, I know in my neighborhood, they're so homes are still selling in two and three days, which I'm like really surprised because there's there is a lot of demand, rates are low. So this is really a good time to be looking at this market and really be, you know, getting ready to go on the offensive. Yeah. And so and so look, just just a quick just a quick note for everyone on here. Um ask questions throughout. There's there's a place for chat, there's a place for questions, ask questions throughout. Don't let something that you're thinking of right now disappear as we move forward so make sure you ask questions let us know that you're out there you're listening you're alive josh and i are going to move pretty fast through this this isn't going to be some drawn out one and a half hour thing we're going to get to a, some really important to the heart stuff that you can take action on right now or, or understand and implement in your company so take notes but ask questions as well and we'll get to them as we go through this through this conversation so this is really important too current condition wise you guys know this again we're just identifying current conditions letting you guys know that we're not living under a rock that's the point of this and you've seen the guidelines get a little bit more stricter on purchase right and so you're gonna have people today that want a home that don't qualify for it or even certain loans even if it's refi related that don't qualify that a few months from now things can change and all of a sudden they are ready to go so you're going to hear us say this word a lot. You're going to hear us talk about being able to identify the right people, the right the right uh, customers to talk to. Uh, but this is a clear sign that look, earlier this year you could be at a 620 FICO score and purchase a home with no you know with little money down. Now it's 700 plus and you need a lot of money down. Every investor uh, making this guideline know, but you need to know this. And so why do we have this picture of line of people? You're going to have a backlog. You're going to have a line of people that want to take action, that want to move forward, that might not be able to, or might also be just a little scared at this very moment to do something, even if they are qualified. So you need to, again, identify those people. Don't keep them waiting. Uh, we're going to talk about how to take action on, on the people that are waiting. Uh, but, but be prepared to move them along when things change. And you're going to need a little bit of automation, which is a word you're going to hear us use a lot in this and how you go offensive. Um, but that's what this slide is about, is, is knowing that because of the, some of the guideline changes, you may have a backlog of people that are fired up and ready to go that just can't. Yeah, and and the value in using the, the data intelligence and then using automation, when these people are back in the market, you know, it's how do you take advantage of that? And that's really what we're talking about here is how to really go after this. Um, you know, I think, you know, this Alex did a great job here, just knowing where our current conditions are. Again, right now we're at three and a half percent interest rate. They're expecting us to be at 3%. Fannie and Freddie said next year we'll be under 3%. So really, you know, what does that mean? You know, if you're currently doing loans for people, what does that mean when you get early payoffs? Um, how do you keep track of that customer? You know, so either you, you, there's two there's two things around going the offensive here. One is go on the offensive to get as much business as you possibly can. And the second thing is go on the offensive to make sure you don't lose, or maybe defensive, don't lose customers that you already had. And you would hate to be an originator and refinance someone and three months later, you got to pay all that money back or a lender and re, you know, repay that money. So keeping in front of those customers, staying engaged with those customers, having communication with those customers is going to kind of, is going to repeat those customers and build customers for life. Yep. And so here we go now, right? So from this slide, let's go on to the, this is why we're here. We're going on the offensive. So let's really talk about this. Let's jump into this. Let's jump to this next slide real quick, Josh. And here's the thing, okay? You just saw this, but let's paint this picture so it clearly sticks in your mind what we're, what we're talking about here. Today, right, this is a beautiful family. You just did their loan, okay? Maybe did it last month. Well, guess what? It might be the exact same family that does a loan a, a few months from now. And 2021 comes around. Guess what? They may do another loan. So going on the offensive also means communication, okay? If this is the same family that might do three loans, right, you want to be able to, to identify that, communicate to them properly. If you're doing a loan for someone now, prepare them for the conversation. 
Don't let somebody else prepare them for the next loan. Look, you honestly, let's be honest here, okay? We all wanna, we all wanna do deals. We all want our teams to do deals. We all wanna be successful. We all wanna help borrowers, but we don't wanna give them bad advice. If the best thing for that borrower is to take another loan, the last thing you wanna do is completely lose the commission and hurt yourself and lose money on actually doing the deal. What you wanna do is be like, okay, you're right, Mr. and Mrs. Borrower, this is the best thing for you, but let me be the one to do it. Let, let me explain the reasons and let me be the one to do it. So if I lose that commission, I can get it on the one that I'm gonna do again. But the worst thing is having to lose everything you've done, thinking you've had a great month, and two months, three months later, four months later, you're, you're losing all that money and now you you're have to dig yourself out of a hole. Um, so we wanted to sort of crystallize this concept of just the fact that rates are going down over time, what's that mean for you? Well, it means for you that the same people that did a loan today may want to do it again tomorrow. And if you're not there for them, you're, you're like, man, my favorite customer is my, now my, 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 uh, you know, my nemesis because they went and took a loan with someone else. And we should just want the best for our clients, right? That's what we're here for. Yeah, and, and to further that point, the average lender only gets one in four repeat customers. <clears throat> 75% of the time that borrower goes with a new lender. Um, a survey was done when they did, uh, the MBA did this a handful of years ago. What they also found was those borrowers, over 50% of the time, a borrower would rather go back to the original lender. Just think about it. They, you've built their trust. How many people do you want to give your social security number to, Alex, or anyone out there? I don't, I don't like it. Who wants one at the most? <laughs> one at the most. How many people do you want to send all this paperwork to? So if you've already built trust with you, if you're an originator, if you're, if you're a lender, if that consumer's already built trust with you, if they're already giving you all the information, you have their trust. So as long as you did a good job the first time, you stay in communication with them, they want to do business with you again because that's easier for them. So you really staying in front of these customers and understanding how to, how to, how to do that is building customers for life. And how do you do a really good job of that? It's just automation, right? Automation and, and, and intelligence, and having the data to know what to do and when to do it. So, so here we go, right? So you know, when we ask who should get all of those three deals, it's you. You should win all of them. That's who should win it. And not because we're, we're fans of yours and you're fans of ours and you're here listening to this, but you should win it because you know who benefits the most? That family does. Because like Josh said, most people would rather work with the existing lender, but there's lack of communication. There's lack of purpose. There's lack of next steps and lack of, hey, we just did your loan. We really want to be your best friend. And a month later, you're just sending, sending random messages that don't help me, right? You right now, and I'm gonna sh you're going to see some slides in a second, right? You should be winning all this business. Let's move to the next one here, Josh, because this is important, right? This is part of the message that we have today. Your borrowers right now are seeing these headlines. All of this is, they're getting their advice from headlines. Think about that for a minute, right? Put a, put a quick note in, in, in a in, in, in message right now or in a note section real quick if this resonates with you. How many of you believe that your borrowers are truly reading headlines and making decisions, right? A bunch of them. But watch this, next slide, right? This is, this is what's happening, next slide. But they're also seeing these headlines. Yeah. So they're seeing crisis, pain, horrible, just hide, hide, hide. And then they're seeing, hey, this is the best time to do a loan. If I'm a borrower, I don't know what's going on. I don't know, I'm not sure, I don't know what to trust. Do I trust headlines? I might have to, nobody else is calling me, nobody else is telling me anything. Oh, I might just be receiving some sort of generic communication, but it's not for Alex, it's just generic. That's the same thing as a headline. Now's the time to get very, very specific, right? So here's the question. Let's go to the next one here, Josh. Here's the question. What's the truth? Those headlines about crisis, that's true. The headlines about great time to take a mortgage, that's true too. Both of these things are true, okay? Both of these things are true. But how do our borrowers know what to do about that, right? How does your, how does your database, how does your future customers, so offensively going out and getting all new customers, right? And also taking your existing database and, and turning them into repeat customers, which is the most profitable thing, which, which you should be doing both, right? They need to know that both of these things are true, but what's in it for them? What's, what's the best approach for them at this moment? And listening to their current situation. So if we go next, next step, right? This is a great stat. Josh has a lot of extra information about this, but you need to understand this, okay? This is, this is if you're going to write anything down and anything's going to resonate from this, this is one of those things you should write down, okay? Remember, your borrowers are reading headlines. 
good and bad, not sure what's going on, they get curious. They call someone that they see regularly that seems like they can answer their question. I don't know. Maybe it's quicker. I'm just making it up. I know it's the, I know it's the, it's the evil, evil, uh, you know, uh, villain for everyone in the mortgage industry, unless you work for Quicken. But 79% of borrowers are going to go with the first person they speak with. Okay. 79%. So it is your job to be one of the first people they speak to, especially if it's your customer, especially if it's your database, right? When you're reaching out and you're buying new opportunities, you may not be the first. Then it's about communication, which we'll talk about in just a second. But Josh, you had some really cool info yeah. on this one. I think, Alex, the point you said here is really, I think, is if you're an originator, whether you're a loan officer or if you're the lender, um, what we're talking about here is building a, a brand, building trust with your customers. So at the very beginning, you know, if you're, if you're staying in contact with them, as Alex said, if they're getting their information from headlines and the news, and we all know the headlines and news are, it, it Depending on what day it is and what news report you read, it's going to all say a different things. So it's going to confuse bars. But if you put yourself in there as their trusted advisor and you really work with them, you're going to gain customers for life. And one of the stats, and this is the CFPB did. So this isn't this is the CFPB did a stat and it was from 2016. So it hasn't been updated. But what they did is they wanted to understand the mortgage market, understand how consumers shop, how consumers buy. Um, is it competitive? Is it not competitive? Some of you guys may remember years ago. Actually, Illinois instituted this thing, which didn't really fully get vetted, where lenders were supposed to, when you get a rate quote from someone, I'm supposed to tell you two other lenders to go to and give you potentially two other rate quotes. That was something the CFPB wanted people to have access to. Hey, don't just go with lender A, go with lender B. And let me tell you why they did that. When they did a study, and I believe it was 77% of the time, the what they found in 2016, every borrower who closed a transaction they took 77% of the time, they took one application with one lender. So this is if they speak to them, you're getting the business almost 80% of the time. If you take their application, you're gonna get their business almost 80% of the time. So if you really think about the value in that, these borrowers don't shop. We all think they shop, but they don't shop. And put yourself in their own shoes. Some do, maybe 10% are gonna be ultra competitive rate shoppers and they're gonna to go to a rate table and they're gonna to try to do everything themselves. But the average American, biggest financial transactions is, is their home. So they need advice, they need someone to talk to. So if you can be there at the right time, you can weed out the headlines of what's going on and you can offer them the right message, the right time, you'll get their business. And it's staying in communication with those customers and they want to give you the business over and over again. So if you can really grab onto this, hey, if my customer is in the market, if I'm there in front of them, I'm gonna get their business. Like that's very, very, very powerful. And you're gonna get their business like 80% of the time get their business, that's huge. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's, look, it honestly, and I know this is gonna be funny, it honestly blows my mind, I'm not even kidding. When, when people think I have to seriously do something special and, and compete in a big way with my existing customers or the people I'm reaching out to, when the truth of the matter is great communication, honesty, clear communication, and you know if you're one of the first to speak to them. If, if you're the first, by the way, uh, I'll turn this off so you guys can, can, can pay attention. <laughs> um, by the way, the next stat, and this was an updated from before, after 2016, I think this was a 2019 study. Um, the next stat, and we'll talk about this in just a second too. No, you wanna, you wanna go back, Josh? Backwards, all right. Yeah. So go no no go 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 one more this way whoops one more and then we're going to jump into the next one after this so um it it blows my mind how many people um believe that it is it is so important to prevent your borrower from going and talking to another lender like how how hey no matter what i do they're going to shop me when you have that mentality they will shop you because you're 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 using words to, sh to tell them you're afraid they're gonna go shopping. And so they go shopping. Um, but statistically they don't, and they don't want to, and nobody does, right? And so if you go to the next slide, this is really cool. We're gonna give a little plug to, to our good friends at, at, at Mortgage Coach. I don't know if anyone on this call um, was at the event yesterday um, with that Mortgage Coach put on called Script the Palooza. Okay, this is very important about what we're gonna be talking about today. This, these people you see on screen are the top producers in the country. Every single person on this screen, okay, is going to make more than a million dollars this year, right? 
They're go they are the best of the best in the industry. And a hundred percent of these people, which by the way, this was an amazing event. If you can get your hands on a recording of this, it's absolutely brilliant. It's, they just did such a phenomenal job. So great job, Dave. He's, he's truly an, an icon in the industry. And he did a great job bringing people together to share from their heart to the people. They're not making anything from it. They just wanted to lift the entire industry. And every single one of these people said on the call yesterday, you must be talking to your customers in your database right now. This is the time. If there was any other time to be reaching out to your customers and making contact, it is right now, right? This is it. And so it is, and the reason they call this script the Palooza is because they talked about what to say and when to say it, how to, how to talk about it. We are about to tell you all that. I know you've been listening to us talk for the last 10, uh, 15 minutes or so, and you're going, hey, I've heard a lot of this stuff before. We, we needed to build this up so that we can get to the meat of this, right? And understand this part right here, when we heard people yesterday, like talk about current events, yesterday say, hey, there's no better time, no more important time than right now than to look in your database and contact everyone in there, right? We're talking about customers, we're talking about referral partners. This is the way you cement your relationships right at this moment, okay? And so, now let's get into some of this fun stuff. Let's get into the takeaways. Let's get into the things that we're going to learn, right? There's, there's two ways to do this, right? There's two ways to go on the offensive. You could do it manually, right? Which is the hard way. And look, there's nothing, there's, there's no pride loss. There's no loss of, of, hey, keep up the good work and patting yourself on the back for pounding phones and manually doing everything you can do to get deals or save deals or build relationships. There's nothing wrong with that. The only thing is you end up looking like this guy. You are tired, it takes, it takes a lot of effort, you're exhausted, your borrowers are gonna hear you're exhausted, your wife and, or husband is gonna see you're exhausted, your, your team members are gonna notice that you're just, you're out of energy, and it's just this very manual approach, which is the hard way. Again, if you have no other option, then fine, right? Then if this is what you have to do, we, we will pat you on the back and that's fantastic. But that's the hard way. And it's just, there's too many people that need your help right now to do it manually, okay? But that is an approach. Then there's the more automated approach. Identify and automate. Again, on that Scriptapalooza call yesterday, every one of those people, okay, that work for amazing companies, by the way, right? Amazing companies, people like you who are leading your company, those people work for you. And what they've done is they found a way to automate who they are and what they do and how they say the things that they're going to say and when they're going to say it, what channels they're going to say. They have identified those things and then they've automated it, right? They've put automation behind it because they personally can't attend to 1,000 or 2,000 people that they've done loans for themselves. It's just not possible. It's not enough time. You may call and get a 10% response. Then you still have another 90% to follow up on and, and you would literally look like the guy from the previous slide if you had to do that. But we're here today, Josh and I are here today to tell you that, look, there, there's an easier way that is actually more effective. It's not just easier, but it's more effective. And it's less threatening, less detrimental to your relationship because there's going to be a lot of spam if you're not identifying pro proper channels and proper messaging and proper people. Then there's a lot of spam. You may be contacting someone that simply does not need your help right now. They just don't need it. And, and you're going to... People don't have time for this, right? They, 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 they have lives to live right now. They're working from home. Things have been flipped upside down. When are they prepared to go back to work, right? So you want to be able to identify the people, the channels, and the process and the communication, and then you want to automate that. Yeah. And, and, and so and to your point, Alex, the manual yeah, way, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> the, if, if the average retail originator is going to talk to 20 to 40 new customers a month, new customers, retail originator, consumer direct originator is going to talk to 100 or 80 to 150 new customers a month. That's new prospects giving away a month, plus all those old customers. I don't care. I mean, I got a great memory. I can't remember 50 new people, 600 people in a year, and then know who should I call, who should I not call. All right, so if you really think yeah. about the amount of data you guys touch in this business, every person that comes into your preview is a potential customer. And once you realize yeah. that and you can automate it, you don't have to be stressed out, you know, working 20 hours a day trying to email everyone. You just, you know, at nighttime, the system does it for you. You can really automate these transactions. I think that's, you know, really obviously very powerful in this. Yes. Yeah. So, so let's get into the big takeaways here. How to go on the offensive. Number one, okay, this is it. This is what you've been waiting for. We have to build this up to make sense. If we started with this, 
it, it wouldn't make as much sense. We needed you guys to understand the three-dimensional view of what we did to get to this point. So number one, okay, how to go on the fence of number one, identify. Let's look at, a, let's look at the, the next slide real quick. Identify what? Identify the people that need your help, okay, that truly need it. Right now, if we're looking at your database, so there's two ways to do this. There's, there's data as a whole, okay? You should not be randomly firing off marketing and sales to people you have no clue about. That's a bad move. If you're doing direct mail, if you're buying leads, if you're, if, if whatever you're doing, make sure you're identifying the audience that you know you can help, that you're not wasting their time, they're not wasting your time. One of the things that we talk about here at Sales Boomerang is also identifying the people in your database and turning all of those question marks, and if you go to the next slide, um, turning all those question marks into actionable, actionable pieces of intelligence. Who has equity? Who's had a significant life event? Who's got lots of debt? Debt right now, liquidity is so important, right? Knowing that you have, that you have someone that qualifies to take a little bit of cash out, put a little bit to the side to, 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 to be there. And I know the, the criteria and the guidelines have changed where it used to be 80, 85%, now it's 75%, 70 sometimes of your equity you can take. My goodness, it's more important now than ever to be able to identify that and, and call your customers and say something like, look, I'm not saying you have to do a loan right now. I just want you to know that you have a lot of liquidity in your, in, in your home. You have a lot of equity in your home. And if you want a little bit of security, if you want to feel comfortable not knowing what the future holds while you're qualified, while you have access to this cash, let me show you a way we can structure a loan for you to put a little bit of security in your, in, in, in your, in your pocket or behind you, right? So identify. You can do that outside your database. You can do it inside your database. The best approach is both. Do both of them, okay? And I, so, I think if I, I think it just, and, and if you're a lender, one of the things when you're doing this, what I would recommend, <clears throat> get a spreadsheet and actually start looking at your guidelines from your investors because they are changing right now. This reminds me of 2008 when the market changed. If you, what you want to be doing is paying attention to your guidelines um, so that way you can look into your database or look into the lead you're buying and make sure you're marketing to people or to Alex's points, I, you don't just randomly send out an offer and say, hey, call me if I'm in my database because rates are lower. If you can look at face value, a third of them don't qualify for a loan, right? Because then you're going to be taking calls. You know, right now there's lenders who have, you know, 30-minute, hour, two-hour hold times. I'm, years ago, I was a loan officer. In 2001, after September 11th, the rate shop, I remember being in IndyMac Bank having four-hour hold times. There's four hours of hold times. And some of you lenders are out there right now at these hold times. You want to weed through those people that don't qualify and make sure you're identifying the people that do and identify them before they raise their hand and identify them when they raise their hand so that you're hyper efficient. Yeah. You want to be very efficient. You don't want your loan officers taking 20 applications in a day and 19 of them never qualified. You can There's the data intelligence out there now so that you can make sure that you're only talking to the people and marketing the people that qualify. So you're not wasting your time. Yeah. You can be hyper efficient. There's still more volume out there than our industry can even handle. And so you have yeah. to really be efficient and identify the right people. Look at your guidelines, look at your FICO scores, and make sure that you're, you, based off of a metric, matrix, you, you then market after the people correctly. And you can use, like a sales boomerang, you can put in the, 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 the FICO scores that you need to be able to make those work. You can use an accelerate that can also do the same thing in your database and interact with sales boomerang that we can pull records from Encompass or your LOS and it can do the same thing based off of credit scores and FICO scores and make sure you're talking to the right people. And then when they don't qualify, we can give them over to Sales Boomerang and they'll monitor them for you so that once they do qualify, they're back in your preview and you're back on the phone with them. So really, you can really identify this data. There's 300 million people in America, right? We don't want to talk to all 300 million. We, 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 <laughs> you, you want to talk to your the people you can close loans and transactions with. I think that's one of the things I can tell you um, from a, 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 me used to being a lender, knowing your data and identifying your data and having the tools to do that is super, super powerful. Dude, cheers to that. Everything you just said is, is, is so, is so spot on there. So that's, that's, that's fantastic. Definitely identifying and, and saving time is, is, is key here. So that's number one. That's, that's number one. Identify. Okay. Number two, scripting. Okay. No what to say, when to say, what channel to say it in, and how to say it. So important, okay? Honestly, it was it was a blessing that yesterday that script of Palooza, and I think that's the next slide, is done again. But just, just to bring attention to your top producers in the country, look, 
we're, we're only identifying and talking about what works. Right? We, Josh and I wanted to put this on um, to be able to share with the industry that, look, there is a way for you to truly go on their fences. Everyone here is going on their fences. Right, there are people on this call that are closing 40, or I'm sorry, on this call, on the screen, they're closing 40, 50, 60, 70 deals a month themselves because they're going offensive. That's what they're doing. They're identifying, they're writing up the scripts. Everyone on this call said, look, there's this some kind of negative stigma about, uh, about scripting and templates, but that's not true, right? Um, it's, it, there, there should be no negative stigma about scripting. Every movie you watch is scripted. Every show you watch is scripted, right? And you enjoy that. If every single show or movie you watched was kind of shoot from the hip, it would be a little bit of a mess. Yes, improv is fun. It is. But you got to be trained to be great at improv. Don't, be imp don't, don't improvise. Have a plan, right? You've identified. Now you have a plan. This is what I'm going to say. This is how I'm going to say it. This is the empathy I'm going to have for my customers right now. This is the intelligence that I'm going to bring to my customers. Now that I've identified them, I know what to say to them individually. Okay. And so if you go to the next slide, this is part of what, what you do, Josh. Um, and when Accelerate Dot's great, now that we have the scripting in which you can help create, Sales Boomerang helps create too. But Josh, you have a plethora, like a library that you can help customers with. Go for it. Yeah, so I mean, what Alex is saying is right. Is, is scripting is very important. There's two there's two parts of scripting. What you say one on one with your customer, and you should have that down, because you're going to get the same questions, you're going to get the same um, uh, objections, and having a good concise answer to that is really important. If you think about it, when you're talking to your customer, you only have a certain amount of time on the phone with them or attention, right? You don't get to sit there with them all day long. So when you're talking to your customer, making sure you are communicating the most important information is uh, at, at that time is where you really can gain customers, right? You don't wanna be talking about something that's not as relevant, but make sure you understand how to answer certain questions. So when someone asks you about, hey, what happens if I file forbearance? You wanna know what the answer to that is. Second to that is, hey, right message, right time, um, right channel. So as a lender, you know, you have options right now as consumers, there are on Facebook, there are on LinkedIn, they're watching YouTube, they're watching Netflix, they're on their phone, they're in email, they're in all these channels. Well, what, what you wanna do is, now we've done this for lenders, is you can actually script out your, your contact strategies from a contact to a past customer, but actually identify when should you call them, text them, email them, Facebook post them, all your best practices, and then come up with the content that matches your message. So script that, create the content, and really drive home through that. That's where there's a lot of power, and then automate it, right? So you know that every customer is getting the same message. Think about it when you go to the store and you go buy something. We've all gone to places, and you go buy something, and they have a great script. They walk you through it, and it's actually easier to buy when someone has a process. It's harder to buy sometimes from people that don't have a process. So this actually really helps you, helps your lenders, or helps your borrowers buy from you, and you'll get you and really gain more customers out of that. And and look, you know, to go to go a little bit more, you can keep this slide on, but um, and and Josh, I know we have a little bit of an echo when when um, I think you're off mute. I think. Oh, there you go. Um, thanks. I, I just had somebody personally message me about it. Um, so you could definitely write in in the in the chat. By the way, when you guys hear something like that, feel free. You just you know we're we're. This is social. We're not, we're not some kind of scary guys. You could definitely write that kind of stuff. Um, but the cool thing is, and this isn't part of this exact conversation, but when you have a process, you have scripting, you have process, proven processes, think about how well you can recruit and retain your loan officers too. When your loan officers come in and go, oh, you have a process, you have technology that works every time, and I can plug into this process, you have some scripting, you have things that have worked. Oh, this person is buying a home. Here's how we're going to talk to them. And, and, and you can see on the screen, Josh has everything from, from text to email to voice to, to social. There's ways for you to engage where your customer is, right? And all of a sudden you're saying, hey, not only should you join us because we're good, but we also have an automated process to help you reach your customers. When you're sitting at a closing or you're doing a deal and there's some kind of event that happens, our system will take over and use a script that works, a template that works. And so... I think that, that's very important to know. If you want to go on the offensive, going on the offensive also means building a big team that can go to war with you, that can go on the offensive with you. Um, and so that is about recruiting and retaining. And when you have this kind of systems in place, and you, it doesn't have to be just, just Josh and Accelerate, Alex and Sales Boomerang, in general, 
if you have scripting and process and automation and a way to identify these things, you can recruit and retain a lot of a lot better talent. So um, let's go to the next next one here. Automate. Um, this is really uh, we we fully you know our favorite F word um, is is frictionless. That's our favorite F word um, because when you can take manual labor out, um, you can get a lot more production out of each individual human being. And what Josh has built and his team has built, he's going to talk about this more more than I I can on on automation is is like you can truly multiply. Remember, it's about retaining and recruiting big great talent. Well, what if you retain and recruit great talent and then you multiply their 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 results by automating properly? And so this is so key about going on the offensive is about points of contact, right? And and how and how to get those and and get them proven. So Josh, I'll let you take it from here. You're on mute, Josh. <laughs> we can try and read your list. Still on mute. Still on mute? <laughs> I'm back online. All right. Now you're good. Automation. So what we're talking about automation is really what you need is uh, you need a CRM, right? You need a system to put this into. Obviously, we have a CRM and we have lead management. So, you know, we can help you with this. But you should be able to from the very beginning of whether it's a um, – an internet lead or someone who goes on your website to apply for a loan or someone you talk to and you put in your database. You want to automate that process from whether where that lead goes to, who calls that lead, when you call a lead, to when you follow up with that lead. Then also you want to automate the engagement and how you talk to the lead, when do you message the lead. Um, this stuff used to be very difficult to do. I mean, two, three, even two years ago, you weren't able to automate all these channels. Um, technology now for lenders that are out there. I've been in this industry for 21 years. I've been in this since 1999. And if we've all been in this industry for as long as I have, we know that technology really hasn't changed much, right? In the last two or three years, we've had some new technology coming out. This is what new technology looks like. This stuff is easy to deploy, easy to roll out, and really drives long-term value for you. Um, you pair this with something like what, what Alex does and, and actually monitor your customers now you're talking about, you know, just really taking this to a whole nother level, having the intelligence of knowing what your borrower is doing when they're doing it, then automating that transaction, you're going to see massive increases. We see, you know, depending on what type of lender you are, how much you do from this, we see lenders get, you know, 10%, 15%, 30% production lifts just by now automating these transactions, doing nothing more than they're currently doing. You sign up, use technology, if you can automate it, this is just add it profit this doesn't add at work this doesn't give you more work this actually lowers your work and gives you more profit and, and that's and that's all off all off it's all all automate the whole journey right you shouldn't be guessing what to say when to say this is a customer you want to make sure every customer gets talked to consistently and constantly with the right message at the right time yes alex on the follow-up side i mean that's that the, the next part is how you know how do you maintain you know, on your end, how do we monitor these customers? We know what, how can how can lenders monitor these customers, and what what's the, what's the opportunity there to to follow up with them and stay in front of them? Yeah. So look, we we talked earlier about this too. Is that when you know today you may have people that want to do something but simply don't qualify based on the new guidelines, right? You may have uh, uh, referral partners that want to give you opportunities that those people simply can't move forward with something. You may have some refi business. You, whatever it is, or even further, you just did a loan for someone. We showed you that by the end of this year and early next year, the rates may be even lower and they're out there shopping. Wouldn't you like to know that, hey, my customer is shopping again? You want to offer them that great service. So you want to identify the fact that they are back in the market and then you want to be able to follow up, but you want to set the precedence up front that you are a no borrower left behind mortgage company and you are going to be there for them, not just for this loan, but for the next 10, if this was their first, or if this was their fifth, you're going to be there for the next six. And so the follow-up process begins, right? Remember, scripting the communication. Look, Mr. and Mrs. Borrower, congratulations, but we're going to be here for you moving forward. Literally, like, this is our job. Um, we, we, this is what we do. So in following up, again, you're going to hear this I word. If you go to the next slide, it's going to go, this is, this is what follow-up is about, identification. The only way to follow up is to identify, honestly. I'll give you an analogy. This is, a, this is a fun analogy. The mortgage industry looks something like this right now. I'm driving my car. I'm low on gas. I pull into a gas station. I fill up all the way. I mean, my tank is full. I pull out of the, of the gas station, get to a light, 
and somebody jumps out in front of me with two tanks of gas and goes, Hey, can I fill up your car? And you're like, didn't you just, I just, didn't you just see me pull out of a gas station? I literally just filled up my car and you're trying to get me to refill my car up right now. That's what the mortgage industry is like. People don't know. They're, they're, they're not sure. So they're like, Hey, let me start offering deals. Let me start offering advice. Let me start offering solutions. There's, there's companies out there. There are people out there that literally, uh, Again, when you work with somebody like, like Josh or, or, or somebody that understands communication, when you do a deal, you're not going to be mentioning things about doing the next deal tomorrow, right? But there are some people that just say, hey, you know what? Let's just, let's just communicate the same thing we communicate to everyone at all times, which means, hey, time to refi. And, and they call you and like, didn't we just do a loan? Why are you telling me to do a refi? Should I do a-? You're like, no, 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 that wasn't meant for you. Well, why are you sending that to me? So follow-up is once again... It's a re- rinse and repeat cycle. Rinse and repeat cycle. Follow-up is identify and then take action on the ones that need to take action on and leave the ones that don't need to take action. Let them be. Let them live their life. Let them enjoy the loan that they're in. Do not bother them. Only support them with positive messages. Your loan looks great. You're doing wonderful. Nothing is, uh, you know, everything is, is, is great. There's no reason for us to reconnect again versus someone that, hey, we know we did a loan for them. They had a really bad FICO score, but they had to do this loan. We should probably follow up with them when things get better before somebody else 79% of the time calls them and they go with that person because it's the first one they spoke to. Before somebody else even gets in their ear, let us identify and message them properly for the follow-up, right? This is how you get super profitable. Retention is profitability. That's it. Retention equals profitability, period. And so if you go to the next slide, um, and then the next slide again after that, this remember, this is identifying from unknown to known, and you're seeing if you go back one more slide, just for one second, Josh, it, you're noticing you're noticing things repeating because it's important. You identify from the unknown to the known. Oh, this is the action, right? They're they're inquiring about a mortgage or their credit went up, and then look right here, your automation, that stuff that you see right there. Now it's already automated. You're already using a system that used to identify the borrower. Now it's telling you, hey, now that we've identified what the problem is, where are they at? Are they reengaged? Are they closed? Are they age leader? Are they house hunting? Are they partners? Are they, what, is, what are they? Now we've identified, and here's the one, two, three, four, 20 steps. 20. Who on your team will systematically do 20 steps every time the right way? No one. No one. It's just, it's just not humanly possible. We all want to, but we just don't do that. There's very few of us that do, but this is why this is so important. This is why automation is so important. Once you've identified what works and you've identified the people that can benefit over and over again, keep it going. The same process but it's uniquely to that borrower. Hey, Josh, blank, blank, blank. Hey, Alex, blank, blank, blank. Hey, Richard, blank, right? Not, hey, anyone that's ever seen this message, hope you take advantage of this. Then we don't listen. We don't care if you're talking to everyone. We only want to know when you're talking to us because that's when we care. And that's why the retention rates are so low in this industry because we typically do a shotgun blast and talk to everyone. But when you, in this environment right here, to go on the offensive and win, to have seven rings like Jordan does, like you saw on the screen, to have that, you have to have a process. You have to have a strategy. You have to shoot 100 free throws every night and make 100 free throws every night so that when it's time to make that final shot and win the game and win the championship, you're not scared. You're like, give me the ball. I got this. Give it to me. I have everything in place. I have automation. I have identification. And I have scripting. And I know I can win. And so those are the four things, guys. Those are the four things you need to do to go on the offensive right now. You can definitely escalate this even past this time. But right now, this is how you go on the offensive. And then we have a little bit of bonus. Let's talk about the bonus. And I knew you, you have a lot to say about this too, Josh. The bonus is this. Build a bench. Build a bench. By the way, I don't know how many of There's a lot of people on this call. So I don't know how many people are in the in, in, in purchase side, retail side, consumer direct, uh, deposit term. We're not sure. A ton of people are here. So we're going to sp- speak broadly. If you do purchase, Right now, you have to build a bench. And here's who you're building a bench for, yourself and your referral partners. There are, there are realtors that will no longer exist after this. They just will go out of business. If there are people in, in real estate that you love, extend, extend a hand to them because they need you. You're going to be, be able to identify opportunities that they can't. They don't have access to credit. You do. They literally are not allowed to look at this information, but you are. And when somebody pops up on your screen as a radar, as a potential purchase, that's your chance for your favorite realtor to stay in business. You bring him and you say, hey, remember this? This guy's now ready for purchase. He may not be ready right now, 
but I want to put him on your bench. And when time things change, I want you to do his deal, right? Also, your referral partners have databases, right? If you're implementing this amazing automation, this amazing process, this identification and automation, and you already have it in place, extend an arm again. Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Realtor, look, I know times are tough for you right now. Purchase is not where it needs to be. I know it's, it's, it's going up, but times are, are, are not as easy as they used to be. I want, I want to be your partner. I want you to be around. Give me your database. Let me do the things I'm doing for my database, for your database. And the minute there's a purchase from your database, I'm referring it back to you. You're getting that back. Okay. Again, not trying to make this a, a billboard for sales boomerang, but our clients are literally referring more business to realtors than realtors are referring to them because they're identifying. They're using, and, and, and Josh and I share a lot of customers together. I think it's 12 or 13 lenders that we share together and all of them are taking advantage of these things and being able to extend uh, a hand to their re re referral partners. So the bonus here is build a bench. If they can't do it now, they will. Things will change, they will, and you wanna be able to automate the, the process of getting them back. Yeah, I think to further that with what Alex said is, we were talking earlier, um, <clears throat> in the past, you know, as a lender, we uh, I was a lender, and one of the things we would do, we would do purchase transactions. And what we did is we built a bench. We built a bench of either buyer readies or people who are almost close to buyer ready, meaning, we take a, a mini, app, mini application and actually get them as close to credit qualified ready uh, or tell them what they need to do to be credit qual qualified to be ready and then tell them to go look. And what we found was almost 26% of all those people that we put into that type of uh, journey after nine months turned into a close transaction. It was unbelievable that those people who are raising their hand to buy homes that if you could nurture them. So sometimes it could be you need a 640 FICO and they're at a 638. Great. Put them in the build the bench. You get their paperwork. You, you sit them in there. They go over to automate. Automation go to the sales boomerang. It, lets us, it tells them they're at 638. The minute that they're at 640, please let us know. System lets us know. Let's the loan office know. Let's the borrower know. Let's the, to, to Alex's point, let's the referral partner know. Hey, Susie Smith is now able to buy a home. She's a, you know, her FICO score is now in line. Go out there and go shop. That becomes unbelievably valuable now a lot of people won't do this because it's you know it's what's in front of me right now it's really easy hey i want to close these loans right now but i can tell you if you start building this bench and start putting those people in there into drip and nurture campaigns you're going to have business in six months from now that you didn't realize you'd have in 12 months this is going to grow and grow and grow and before you know it this may be, be this may be your biggest source of business is actually how you just build this bench and you constantly maintain these customers it's very, very, very powerful. So, so you know how people are hoarding toilet paper right now? You should be hoarding your customers the same way right now. This is, this is what you should be doing. You should be hoarding your customers because they will be useful, right? Maybe not right now because something's happened. They're not qualified, but they will be useful. And if somebody's not laughing on a call right now, I, I'm going to be really upset. Um, but, but in all honesty, it's, it's, it's build that bench by hoarding those people that you know you're going to be able to help out in the future. Um, so look, let's get let's get to the to the finish line here, and I hope everyone's had. Uh, and then let's answer some questions if people can can post some questions or ideas. Um, the the big takeaway, the number one, the most important takeaway. This is the takeaway. Identify and automate. That is how you go on the offensive. There are a lot of people that are going to be spinning their wheels. They're going to talk to ten people when only one of them needs needs to have a conversation. And while they're talking to ten. You can talk to one that needs your that needs your help. One to one. You need it. I'm here. 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 Efficiency, profitability. Efficiency, profitability. Scaling, recruiting, retaining. All of that. If you can identify and then automate, set yourself up for success. Period. I know that sounds like a cliche, but this is this is fact, right? This is what's happening. Um, this is what the best of the best in the industry are doing, and they've been doing it uh, for a long time. And they're implementing these resources and tools because they want to continue to win. In all honesty, they want to continue to win your business. That if you're not that if you're not doing this, they'll they'll do it. Um, but this is the key takeaway: identify and automate. I don't know if you wanted to add anything to that, Josh. Oh, um, I I want to sort of, yeah. I think I, that is a takeaway, which is again what we're what we're saying to everyone out here is you can easily identify these customers. Take the time to do that. Understand your guidelines. Once you have it set up, you can identify customers you need to talk to, then automate it. Like this is one of those things. Spend a little time now put this in place, and then for the next five years, 10, what, however long this goes, you're going to have an ROI and exist return on investment over 
and over and over again. We talked, we have lenders who started with us two, three plus years ago, and now they just look back and they go, all this business they're driving because of identifying and automating these processes. It's unbelievable how much business this can actually grow for you. When I was a lender, um, about 16.5% of all my production came from our system, automating communication, lead distribution, recycling of leads, and um, uh, engagement. So if you look at your, if you're a lender, if you were to take 16.5% of your loans off your books, that might be all your profit. It was for me, right? That top line. So if you <laughs> can do this right, this can be all your profit. This is just all gravy. Like it's free money, found money that you really don't have to go out there and, you know, chase. It's going to cost you five dollars to get a repeat customer. It's going to cost you five hundred or a thousand or two thousand to get a new customer. I don't know. I'm going to go after the repeat customer every single day of the week. Identify anatomy. I think it's very, very, very um, powerful. I know Alex here has a bonus giveaway, which uh, 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 I think is really powerful. That um, is is loan loss report. So something that you know, this is uh, sales Boomerang does this. I've done this in the past when I was a lender, and it was really eye opening. First, understand what business you've lost. Understand what the opportunity is. You may be very, very, very surprised that you can get a report that says the people you talk to, the loans you close, what happened to them? All those people from last year, did they already refinance? Did they go with someone else? What percentage of your customers you lose? You can identify how big of an opportunity is. It may be eye open and you go, holy cow, this is you know $2 million in revenue, $3 million, $5 million. It could be big numbers. And then if you realize that that was what last year's number was, what's next year's number going to be if market's only gotten better? So I, I would take advantage of this. Um, get in there, uh, contact Sales Boomerang, find out what this loan loss report. Very, very, very valuable, very powerful to figure out how you are positioned in the market. How are you winning? I mean, how do you know how you're competing against other people? There's no scoreboard, right? Let, let's put it out there so you at least know, you know, I, I ride a bike. I, I, I have, now I'm do Peloton. There's a leaderboard. Believe me, I pay attention to the numbers where I am at. The 60,000 people have done this right. I want to know how I'm doing compared to everyone else. If I didn't have that, I, I wouldn't know how hard, you know, where I am at in, 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 in competitiveness. If you're competitive, you're in this business, you have to be competitive. You need to know how you're compared to other people. So I would take advantage of this. Um, Alex, we actually, we do have questions, but we are about seven minutes past uh, our uh, our end time. Um, I don't, Yeah. I, let me see if I can, hold on. I want to try to pull up some of these questions because sure. now, uh, I mean, some of the questions are lots of questions about when should you tell a borrower when's the best time to refi. Um, one of the questions we have here is, can you do rate monitoring? Can you actually monitor what rates are and when someone becomes available for a new loan and uh, present an opportunity? Alex, I know you can answer so, that one. Yeah, I, th I think we could both answer this one. The the, the answer The answer is yes. Um, and, and, and that's the simplest way to answer. The answer is yes. And so we we can show you how. And I know with Josh, can, can, we can do it as well. Sales boomerang. That's that's part of what we offer. So um, absolutely, you're you're able to identify who in your database is ready for a better loan based on their rates alone. Um, and so if you're not doing that already, I recommend you do it now, starting now. If you need help with that, reach out to us. We'll definitely help you out. Reach out to Josh. He can also help you out with that. But yes, the answer is absolutely. Yeah. You know what we'll do is, if you have any other questions, we do have more, but why don't you uh, email us, you can reach out to our companies, um, just because we're we're past our end date, our end time here, and I don't want to keep people on too long, but um, you can reach out to Alex at Sales Boomerang, or Alex at SalesBoomerang.com, you can reach out to me at Josh at you can go to our website, you can request a demo, talk to one of our team members, um, I know Alex has great content, and they're pushing stuff out, we do as well, we are consistently having webinars like this, especially now during this whole stay-at-home shelter thing. So um, please take a look at what we've got going on. We have other content, we have other things, uh, other market updates and, and trains uh, as well. And please reach out to us. We appreciate everyone for uh, hopping on. Alex, it's always great to be with you, buddy. And uh, appreciate all pleasure, the great tips. Man. You guys all have can't a- Can't wait uh, to travel and come see you again in California. Hey, listen, we're, it's, well, it's sunny outside, the shade's down, but you know, anytime when you're, you're ready, you come on out. All right, guys, thank you everyone. And uh, if you have any questions, again, reach out to us. Thanks. See you guys. Thanks.